the takeover happened, as I said it would, people will be, oh, when, when have we got leads? Hello people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show and good afternoon to you all. Uh, as you can see, I've got my good friend here, Mr Lachlan Locks of Leicester City Fan TV to talk about the title race because that's what it is now. Leicester um, have allowed this to become a title race and that's what it is. Of course, you can praise Leeds United, you can praise Southampton Ipswich, but Leicester's recent form, probably after the Leeds game, um, has been... Is it after the Leeds game locks or was there a couple before? Middlesbrough a few days Sorry. before. Yeah, yeah. So there was Middlesbrough before. But it has been quite a fall off. And of course, you know, like you said on the other one where we had, um, you know, Benjamin Bloom and Liam on, you did say, look, it's not so much Leicester, it's Leeds' as form. But now of late, obviously, you've lost a couple more. You draw the other day. You've really, really opened this up, locks, for all four teams, really. Um, look, folks, we're not discrediting or discounting Ipswich or Southampton. Let me just put that out there. But busy people, me and Locks are free. So I wanted to jump on this afternoon to chat to Locks about what was really the almost perfect weekend for Leeds um, and a catastrophic one, really, for Leicester, even though you drew. So how are you feeling, mate? Because I keep getting told to watch Leicester City Fan TV by the people that watch this, say, Joe, go watch it, they're in meltdown, which is natural, I can imagine. I can imagine. But talk to me about where you're at, bro. Uh, I mean, it's it's very, very bad, mate. It's not good. <laughs> um, you're right, when we spoke to Benjamin Bloom, that, that show, I can't remember the, the lad from Southampton's name, Liam, sorry. Liam, yeah. Liam. I did say it was, it was less Leicester bottling more how good leads have been and that nobody else can keep up with that but now it is Leicester bottling it has to be it has yeah, to yeah. be because um you know you look at I mean we lost to Middlesbrough we lost to Leeds and there was no there was no shame fair, really you were you were better than us in that game let's be honest like you were really good for 70 75 minutes Oh, yeah. It, it, after that Middlesbrough defeat, if we played like we did against you, if we played against any other team in the league, we would have won. Um, and, you know, we had a couple unlucky uh, moments with the, the disallowed goal and etc. Yeah. So, um, but I think the the comeback kind of is a um, is the epitome really of both clubs, I think. Yeah, it's pushed the, leads the, on again, on it, in a way. And yeah. Then... And, and, and I think it shows, it highlights perfectly how Leeds are just relentless you know set back fine but we'll push on whereas Leicester in a good position throwing it away and that's that's continued since that game so um yeah we, we are we are bottling it mate 100 percent. and I said to you after the Leeds match I said to you that Leicester love a second a half bottle. of the season bottle um the two years <laughs> it is your Brandon DNA <laughs> it is the DNA mate it is it is because I used to take the piss out of um yeah uh, Matt, Matt yeah, Tottenham, yeah. obviously for 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 Botland. So yeah, it's rough, mate. It's not a good time. It's really not a good time. We're sixteenth in the form table. Wow, is 16th. that how? Wow, that is really bad, isn't it? From where yeah. you were, yeah. Wow, that is mad. Do you do you think you can turn it around, bro? Obviously, there's still a long way to go. There's many twists and turns. Like. Are you confident or what are you seeing on the pitch? Like, what are you seeing from Enzo Maresca ball to say, do you know what? We are still creating chances. We've been just a little bit unlucky and that's what's happening. Or is it... Because I, I think I listened to second tier and you barely had any shots against Hull, I think. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that is right. Yeah, it's. Um, I think the quality of chances aren't, aren't good enough. People are going to... And I, I do like a pop at Dakar. You know, he didn't play, but he played, well, he played the last four minutes of the whole game. But I do like a pop at some players. And, you know, that's pathetic. The finishing ain't good enough. But obviously, if you create better quality chances, then you're going to score more goals rather than creating half chances. So um, have I seen... What have I seen from... And So this is it. I've done a full 180. They're, on Leicester Fan TV, they're calling me like 180 Flip boy flop. and all this. Flip flop and yeah. all that. But, but you're then I to, don't. You're allowed to change your mind, mate. Well, of course you are. You are. I mean, look at uh, look at Ash on your Twitter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, look at me with Thurpo, bro. Now he's the best left back in the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what do I think? So, I think that all season I haven't seen any evidence 
that Enzo Maresca is capable of doing enough on the pitch during a game to change things around, change the momentum of a game. Mm. Um, people associate me saying that with like, oh, oh, you want what do you want? Four four two, lump it up to the top man, you know, the big man. Like, no, obviously not, because I've been slating all season Leicester fans that have been saying that. I have got no problem with this brand of football, this type yeah. of football that is taking over the world pretty much, right? Since, you know, obviously, you know, Pep. whatever, you could say Pep, I suppose. Um, this this style of football is capable of winning games and you only need to look at, you know, two months ago to see that. However, uh, teams figured us out and Enzo isn't doing enough to, uh, to, to change things, to improve us, to find different ways of winning. And I don't know if he is capable of that. And then people say, well... You know, he's still learning. He, he's an inexperienced manager. Well, then why did we hire an inexperienced exactly. manager? So. This is why I've had confidence in Farker because out of mm -hmm. all the managers, he is the most experienced at doing this. He is the most experienced in the running. The mad thing is, mate, because your game's been rescheduled because of the FA Cup, he said to us, let's look at the table at game 40 when we've got six games left. If we win our next two, we'll be top of the league. Even though you'll have a game in hand, we'll be top of the league. So it's almost like... He told us to wait to game 40. Game 40's come around and we're top of the league. It's like he know he's seen the script. He knows how this is going to go. Michael says, has AFCON disrupted your season? I wouldn't say AFCON and Diddy. And Diddy has been a huge loss for you, especially when you consider that Kazadei, I know he wasn't great, but Kazadei also went back to Chelsea. Do you think and did he coming back? I don't know when's he due back. Is he on? Is he on the horizon? Could he? He's back. He's back. He's back. Right. Okay. When did he play? He played. He was on the bench against um, Sunderland. Okay. And he came on in the last twenty minutes, and then Enzo said after the game he wasn't meant to play any any minutes because he was like literally he's already ahead of schedule you know he's he's yeah. already been brought back sooner than he should have why is he on the bloody bench first of yeah, all of if he's if, yeah. he, if there's a, that risk and then he played he played uh what half an hour against uh hull as well so okay. yes uh, leicester are unbeaten with dewsbury hall uh sorry with ndd they are unbeaten with ndd um yeah. and I think it's a contributing factor, but I don't think it's. It, I don't think it's. Uh, it's much more deep rooted big. than that. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's that big. Cassidy again. You mentioned Cassidy. Um, you he you was don't know how important. Yeah, like, well, well, was you don't. He or not? You don't know how important someone actually is until they leave. I think yeah. he is. We well, that's the crisis that we've had. The number eight position or the advanced eight. Um, mm. To be fair to Cassidy, he was abs. Well, he was pony for. 80% of the time he was here. The last couple of games he was here, he actually did look a bit better. And then um, it was almost as if uh, Poch thought, oh, well, he's getting a bit better. We'll bring him back now. So yeah. um, th that was a shame because the club did uh, believe that he was going to be here all season, no matter what performances he was putting in. So, Yeah, yeah. No, of course, for sure. Um, listen, I don't want to like be all... Um, like it's game over for Leicester because it's. Oh, not you may as well, mate. I'm already down on the dump. You may as well make it. Worse, no, mate. no, no, no. But this is a good question, and I, and I put this also on Leeds fans as well, though. I think whoever whoever misses out and finishes in third, even though Benjamin Bloom's told us statistically, normally the team that finishes third goes up when you look through history. I just think it's going to be that tight right until the end that it'll be soul-destroying for a group of players, for a squad of players, for the manager, for the club, if they just miss out and then drop into the playoffs. Do you have any sort of confidence if you were to, to miss? Let's say you miss out on final day, and I'll say this for myself. I think it's rock hard for Leeds players, fans, everybody to then regalvanize and say, right, come on, we've got, you know, potentially three more games and we're, we're up in the Prem. How do you feel about it, bro? Absolutely no chance <laughs> whatsoever we get to even, we won't get to the final. We'll, we will really? get knocked out in the semis, mate. There is no <laughs> chance. Can you imagine if you're a player? West Brom right. win it, you know. I'm convinced West Brom win the playoffs. Well, imagine you're a player, mate, and you've spent 99% of the season at the top of the league, 15 points clear, and then, you, and then you've got to get yourself up yeah. for two semi-finals against West Brom, two legs yeah. against West Brom, and then a final yeah. against whoever. No chance, mate. I honestly can't see it. I think, um, 
I, I, to be fair, mate, I think if Leeds go above Leicester this weekend, um, it is this weekend, isn't it? That you Sunday can go above we us? play. Sunday. We've got to win by two two goals because I think if we win one nil, you would still be top by goals scored. Um, but we would have the same goal, like same goal difference, both forty-one. But you've scored more than us. Um, but I think two nil gets us top, and then your game in hand isn't until a few weeks. So because of the international break uh-huh, as well, yeah, we've got the yeah. international break. I, I think if Leeds go top this weekend, that's it, mate. I, I think the players know. will. No, I do, mate. I do because I think the players are. I, I just, you know, I just don't think. I think it's going to be such a big like confidence shitter basically yeah, it's gonna yeah like because you've got to like i just said mate same same thing about the playoffs you know that if you spent all that time at the top of the table and, and you've put in what you believe is you know ridiculously hard work and all of this and then suddenly you know it's caught up with you and, and you're now second place level on points let's say with ipswich or something like that or, or yeah. a, a point ahead of ipswich you're thinking i don't know i just feel like it's going to suck every bit of confidence every bit of um every ounce of belief out of them because I just think mm. if you're 15 points clear and you still can't you know be on game week 40 top of the table then what what can you do and, and it is only it is only down to the players and the manager that that's whose fault it is but mm. I just feel like this is now the turning point where if Leeds get to that number one spot I think they'll just continue it I just think yeah. you'll just stay on that path then 2024 has been some year for this this squad I can't lie with conceded three goals all year none from open play by the way they've all come from set pieces which is just insane um i mean we have got millwall next and if anyone's going to score set piece it'll be them with neil harris so i wouldn't i wouldn't like be overly confident that that's three points yet um mate i know we disagreed on this um and and i know you'll probably still disagree with me now because context applied when you look at it bigger he didn't mean it but that little snapshot from enzo saying this is a big game for them not us now as a group of fans we're like well maybe if you'd have concentrated on all maybe if you'd have made it as big as we made it then you know you might be different how do you feel about that now or do you still think no leeds fans took it out of context i still think it's the same thing mate it it is literally lost in translation it's him you know again i'll say the same thing like i said to you that at the time how many times have you heard a manager or a player say it's just you know it's just a game at a time it's no you know it's it's the same game it's the same three points available blah 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 that's what he meant you know it, whether it was taken out of context or not it doesn't really matter because it's in the past now but i still yeah. believe that's what he said and you know leeds fans will probably say well you know if you focused on the game or if you if you tre- treated that game like it was a big game mm-hmm. um then maybe you would have won. And I, I think we obviously, we I think we probably did treat it as a big game. It's just obviously in the media, he said what he said. And yeah. um, if anything, yeah, the only, you know, it worked against him because it got the players, the Leeds players and the Leeds fans um, got, got obviously your, caught your attention. And 100%. it just made, the- it gave you, it gave you that extra 1% that you wanted to be yeah. us. 100% because Ampadu, when he comes off the pitch, the first thing he said to Leeds United admin with the camera was, oh, won a big game. So clearly it had gone in there for them as well, right? So and that's Yeah, Ampadu's got a lot of confidence with uh, for someone with three relegations on his team. Oh, here mate. we go. Don't be throwing <laughs> shade. Don't be throwing shade at the best six in the league. I'm joking. Not, I'm joking. That is also the best centre-back in the league. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um... Mate, let's talk about this because I've not I've not watched you of late. I can't oh. lie, mate. I've been busy. Um, Mark says Keenan Dewsbury all lost his mojo. I even was told as well that, you, that that a lot of shade was getting thrown Wout Fesser's way as well. Has he dropped off? What's going on? Um, everyone's dropped off apart from Jamie Vardy, and that's that's been the case yeah. for about ten years, mate. So <laughs> that always happens. Um, <laughs> I think um, Dewsbury Hall's taken after his. Uh, He's taken after his mate Madders, his darts mate Madders, uh, with his uh, half a season. Does, d- doesn't perform two halves a season, only one mate. That's, what, that's how it works. It is, look, I, people will say, well, don't be harsh because, you know, of everything he's done already this season and he stuck around in January when he could have gone. But, mm. like, your team needs you. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not just him, it's more. There's more of them, but, you know, he gives it the bigger. This is what I don't like about modern football, mate. People, they... they these players take plaudits every day of the week happily, but when there's a bit of criticism, they hide. 
And I just feel like Dewsbury Hall is one of them players right now who is hiding in a bit of, you know, there's a bit of adversity going on and a, and a, and a bit of, um, you know, when the going gets tough, he seems to be hiding a little bit. Yeah. Um, and again, mate, I could probably say the same for every player besides Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy is the only one who's probably got better over the last few weeks rather than, and I think that's, that is just why Jamie Vardy, that is just Jamie Vardy. You know, mm. the going get when the going gets tough, everyone else hides. Jamie Vardy stands up and goes, all right then, let's have you. Whereas the others don't. And yeah, does, that's yeah. why we need Vardy to stay fit. Um, after the Sunderland game, Vardy didn't uh, train all week. You hear this, you hear stories like this for old players, right? Where they don't, they don't train and they just show up to match day. And that's what Vardy did uh, after the Sunderland game. He didn't, didn't play, uh, he didn't train. And then he showed up and against Holland scored two. So, um, he now has to obviously start every game that he's fit. And and you mm-hmm. mentioned uh, Voutfast, mate. Enzo's dropped a bollock. Connor Cody, mate. Uh, I know we've joked throughout him all season. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Connor Cody has been magnificent uh, okay. in the last few games he's played. Um, he played in the Bournemouth game where we kept a clean sheet. He then played in the Sunderland game where we kept the clean sheet. Um, and then the two games in between that, he's been dropped. In, in the whole game, he was dropped. And people will say, well, it's probably because of his age. But he's not that old. He's not Vardy's no. age. You know what I mean? If yeah. Vardy can do it, And he's been played it. all season lots, let's be honest. So. Exactly. If, if Vardy can do it, Connor Cody can do it. And um, yeah. Enzo dropped him. Uh, and Fast came in. And Fast, I mean, their their first Stinkers. goal was, was down to Fast, mate. And uh, it's another bollock that has been dropped by uh, Enzo Maresca there, I think, mate. Mavadidi as well. Shocking. The last month. Terrible. This is what I'm saying, mate. These are players that are happy to take the plaudits when things are going well, but they just you know seem what, to though? disappear. What I will say, and again, this is then on the rest of the squad, because I think all of us hit the nail on the head, because... You, m- you mentioned Mavadidi, Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Amazing first half of the season, dipping into the second half. Same with Somerville and Rutter. However, I mean, Rutter's still getting assists and whatnot, and I think him and Leif Davis have the most in the league. But in terms of impact on the game, both Somerville and Rutter are nowhere near where they were in the first half. And again, that comes to getting targeted, getting doubled up on, maybe it's leggy, having carried a team and all that sort of stuff. So I think, I, I hear you though, you, if you're the... If you're the talisman, you have to be the talisman. Otherwise, where else are we getting it from? I do hear you, but at the same time, maybe. Do you think the international break or this long layoff now, because it's been Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, you, I know you've got the FA Cup game, but then again, you're not playing it in the championship, so that's a bonus for you. Are you looking for... I'm quite looking forward to this rest between Millwall and then again the international break, because I'm like, the lads could do with the rest. Is it the same for Leicester, do you think? It has to be. I mean, this is it. After that international break, yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. You have one final push to the end Eight of the season. Eight games, bro. Eight that, games. That's what I'm saying, mate. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's, it, and it is, as it stands, it's a shootout, right? When someone yeah. when someone drops points, you have to be there to, to pick up your points, all three. Uh, and that's the only way you win the title at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, there's none of this like it was earlier in the season where like, let's say Leicester lost to um, Le- again, Leeds and Middlesbrough and you're thinking, right, well that's fine because come the end of the season, you know, they'll drop points here and there and all this. It's not, you, it, you can't think like that now. It is literally the eight games and, and that's it. So um, we, yeah, like I said, we have to make these, uh, it's two weeks, isn't it? The insta- you know, yeah. in total between the, mm. between the last game, and the first, the next game. So, um, you have to make it count. I don't know what Enzo Maresca can do, mate. Is he going to get on the blower to Pep Guardiola? I mean, if you were him, you'd be like, well, yeah, 100%. you do it. You do it. You do it. And you get know, him I'm to sure take he's... training, mate. Get him to take training for the two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, mate, you'd, you'd imagine he's already done that 100%. all season, you'd think. Um, yeah. So, Mavadidi, Dewsbury Hall, players like this, they do look tired. And mm. then again, yeah, you've got two weeks to, to have a little bit of a, a refresh. Um, so it's a weird one. Maybe the draw um, is is a good time in the league to, to end mm. things because if you win the game, you want a game straight away to carry on yeah. the momentum. If you lose, you want a game straight away to, to put it right. Whereas a draw, all right, you can go into the international break and work. So, yeah, mate, I think... Um, I'm I'm still going with Leeds to win it, mate. I I just yeah. don't think we're going to be able to do enough to 
we're not being able to improve enough at this stage, I don't think. I think the, the January window was the time to do it, to bolster the squad a little bit. We've not been able to do it because of financial fair play, um, which everyone's aware of now. So, uh, Just on that then, because Barney says, mm. are you scared that if you don't go up this year, you get hits with a points deduction next year, and then it's champ limbo for years? That's the worst thing about championship is when these parachute payments go we've seen it with the likes of Watford we've seen it with West Brom there's other teams that don't utilize the parachute payments correctly and then you do get stuck in the championship until you get a top coach or some young players come through that that, that can then bridge that gap are you worried about that mate I, I, I mean I wouldn't be worried for you I think whoever doesn't go up Apart from Ipswich, because it's, I think they'll get picked off, and I don't know if they have the financial might. But I think if it's Leicester, Southampton, or Leeds, we still go up the following year. I don't know how you feel about that. Disagree, mate. For Leicester, Leeds and Southampton, yeah, I think so. But um, if Leicester don't go up this season, I would put a lot of money on us being in the Championship for at least the next five years. I honestly believe that because. We, our club, our model is is based on um, bringing in young players and selling them for a bit, you know, a nice bit of money. Um, mm. We don't have anyone else to sell, mate. Dewsbury Hall, that's it. We've got Dewsbury Hall to sell. That's it, really, if you think about it. Fatuwu is not even Fatu a permanent Wu. sign-in. Oh, it's not, not, it's not, no, no, it's a loan. If we get promoted, we buy him. If we don't go up, then we don't go up. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't yeah. sign him. And we won't be able to, he's 15 million. We won't be able to get him anyway. So, um yeah, I think we'll be stuck in this league if we don't go up this year. And obviously, in terms of the points deduction, the question that you put up on screen, um, we are getting a points deduction whether we're in the Premier League or the Championship next season. Is that right? It's what what we're led to believe. We're, yeah. we're led to believe that the EFL have got us for this year, right? Don't know how, mate. It's, it's all a shambles, I think. I know your view and fair, you know, rightly so, a lot of people's views, pretty much everyone's views are you cheated. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you look at Leicester City for the last three years in a row, we've made net profit. You know, what else are we meant to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we're net profit and we were a team trying to get into the top four. What else are you meant to do? You, mm. you, you know what I mean? So um, we've been, we're, we've basically been, we're being punished for trying to break into the top four the right way for, for buying players, still making a net profit. Um, the problem is the wages, as Perko in the comments there said, um, and you know the the problem is this wages. This is wild. I still can't believe this, you know, bro. Harry Winks, ninety grand a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't know, obviously, the total of points. I mean, you you think maybe six points just going off Everton? What happened to Everton? Mm. But I would much rather try and turn around six points in the Premier League to survive than have six points minus six points next season in the Championship, trying to turn that around and get promoted. Because I think we're going to be losing a lot of quality players this summer. I mean, the likes of Vardy, as it stands, Vardy, Iheanacho, Vestergaard and Didi uh, are all going on free contracts, uh, end of contract. And then you've got to look at Dewsbury Hall. He'll be gone, right, if we don't yeah. get promoted. Um, Connor Cordy's Harry... on, according to Capology as well, Connor Cordy's on 75 bags a week, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So, uh, and he's played five, wow. six games a season, six, six games. So um, it's mismanagement behind closed doors. His name is John Rudkin. I don't know if you've ever seen me tweet about him. That's his oh. name. He's a director of football at the club who started his career as a academy liaison officer. And he's now a bloody director of football. He basically used to uh, pat on the, the young players backs and make sure that their bloody bed sheets were fitted in and all this type of stuff, mate. And now he's a director of football at a, a club getting paid millions probably so um leicester fans have been asking him to leave the club since probably 2019 uh it's not happened um he is top our owner's right hand man um and unfortunately um top our owner is uh, out of his depth mm. uh he can't run this football club unfortunately and um and yes, since obviously Vishai died, we've been we, it's been a downward spiral. We won an FA Cup, obviously, is in between that, but that's just you know things don't go to shit straight away. They slowly decline, um, and that's what's been happening at Leicester. So um, we've got we're we're run by idiots, mate. Unfortunately, we used to be the best run run club in the country. Everyone knows that it was it was out there. You know, everyone used to say it, and now we're probably one of the worst in the in the top leagues. Uh, you know, especially. 
hundred percent. Just to just to put it into context, and again, it, it it's like <laughs> it's not very often me I'm able to gloat about the running of my club. But if you look here, like the highest paid player on our books at the minute is Rutter and Bamford on seventy. Um, obviously, they're Premier League wages as well, having known when they were given new contracts. You've got Firpo, James Strout. And then if we do compare it with Leicester City and have a look what their their players are earning, obviously Vardy's different because it's Premier League, but it's there's just no comparison like in terms of what some of your... Like Hamza Chowdhury, 50k a week, according to this. That seems wild, bro. Um yeah, it seems like you say it. they've been a little bit frivolous with the wages. And look even... at Dewsbury all <laughs> 20. Yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's mad, isn't it, mate? So, yeah, it yeah, it's wild. But listen, I don't just want to make this about Leicester and Leeds. Obviously, um, Ipswich are still in there. They did drop points at the weekend and, um, well, they got beat, mate. How nice was it for you? I don't even know if you're focusing on them as much as we are. Maybe you weren't, but now you are. But how nice... Was it to see Ipswich get Ipswiched? They scored in the 70th minute. You're thinking, oh, man, they've done it again. Kiefer Moore against his old club. And then they get two injury time goals uh, from Cardiff City. They drop points. Are you worried about Ipswich as well? Like, what? what's the deal on uh, on Ipswich? Well, you know me, mate. I'm really bullish. And um, if if I think we're good, I will say we're the best team in the world. If I think we're yeah. shit, I will say we're the, we're, I'll lose my head. Um, and... To be honest, mate, I'm, I don't even care anymore. I think if we don't finish in the top two, and I'm being serious, I just, honestly, I don't care because if we fin- if we don't finish in the top two, it's it's our fault. And um, I didn't even smile. I didn't get excited when I saw Ipswich, you know, lose that game, mate. I, I just thought, you know what? Like, it's, it's still in our hands. We're still top. And yeah, yeah. we've got the same amount of games as anyone else, obviously apart from Southampton. And... Um, if we win every game or if we win more than everyone else, we will get promoted and that's it. And, you know, if we don't, it's only ourselves to blame. Um, Ipswich, yeah, luckiest team I've ever seen in my life, mate. It's crazy. Wild, they, it? they 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 uh, equalised against us in both games with deflected goals. Mm. Deflected goals in both of them. Um, I can't believe how many deflected goals they, deflected goals they score. Um, but again, mate, you've just got to, you know, applaud them mate i mean fair play yeah. they're doing what they need to do to be up there um and you know these types of teams the underdog types of teams like ipswich when they have a setback like they did they're probably going to come back now and win five in a row again you know it's yeah. what they do yeah. so um yeah I- i'm trying not to even think about leeds ipswich because again like it, it, you best believe you mate you know me like if, guess... if we don't go up i am gonna be like until it's I'm not just... in your hands right you don't really need to focus on them because it is still in your hands. You still have a gap. That's right? what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, mate. Like, if we don't go up, it, it's not, it's not the referee's fault. It's not mm. uh, Ipswich fault, Leeds fault. It's not you know, disallowed goals. It's not red cards that shouldn't because these are all things that Leicester fans are talking about. It's none of that. It's our own fault. It is the manager and the players that yeah. have basically thrown away a, a 15 point gap. Um, no one else. Exactly, mate. Yeah. No, I agree. I I do agree. I do agree in that respect. Is there any of your remaining fixtures that you're overly worried about? Obviously, you've got to play Southampton, haven't you, mate? Is there any? I look at Bristol City, mate. When you return off the international break, away is that away from home as well? I know they've uh, not yes. been. Gr- I know they've not been great of late, but they they do tend to show up against the big boys. Obviously, they beat West Ham in the cup as well. They gave us games in both games. They almost got a result against Ipswich before late Ipswich goals, so I think they show up in them big games. Is there any games you like looking at thinking, oh shit, man, that's a tough one? Uh, I mean, you know, the you've got Southampton, that's an easy one to say later on in the season now. Yeah. It would have been this Friday, it was meant to be, but it was obviously, it's been moved now. Yeah. Um, because we've got Chelsea. Um, mm. you're bit, How do I you mean, feel about getting through in the FA Cup now? Because now I'm like, I was gutted we lost, but now I look at the table and I think, I'm fucking glad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's okay just because it's the international break, isn't it? We, you know, we play them this Sunday. We play them this Sunday at 12.45 and then you've got two weeks off. So I don't think it's actually that bad because um, mm. then you've got two weeks of rest regardless. It's the same as yeah. if we were playing Southampton this Friday pretty much. So 
um, it's okay. If we go through, then you're like, you know, if we did beat Chelsea somehow and we go yeah. through, then me, you're like, oh. It wouldn't surprise me if you did, mate. We, we, we nearly took them to extra time. They weren't great. Poch might well, I know, get sacked, yeah. you know. Mm, Jesse Marsh. <laughs> I know, mate, please, please, please give Can it to Jesse. Oh, mate, it'd be amazing. Yeah, mate, it's if we beat Chelsea, I'm like, oh, man, what do yeah. we do here? Because what, what do we actually do? They um, are at Wembley, though. Because <laughs> against Bournemouth, we played a really weak side, mate, against Bournemouth. Right. Um, we had a couple of players come on in the second half, but, you know, we we, we, we did play a weak side and, and thankfully we beat them. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, Southampton we've got, I mean, later in the season, that's obviously one to, to be worried about if you look at, you know, on paper. But, you know, we turned them over early in the season. We have, performance-wise, we've actually been okay this season against the the. the the top four we haven't the results wise we haven't we've we've dropped a lot of points um i think we've got the worst head-to-head -head record out of the top four teams but we performance wise it's been there like against you know against leeds it was there um so i'm not too worried about that you look at other teams yeah like you said bristol city after the international mm. break uh we've got norwich Hull, still to play hold just played them second oh, time yeah, yeah. We've got Coventry um, away i'm a little bit worried about that cover yeah yeah because they can show up yeah so yeah. I think if you said to me, would you rather Southampton or Bristol City, the first game back after the international, I'd obviously say Bristol City. So I'll, I'll take it. And, you yeah. know, we just need to put things right. But, yeah. Uh, talking, I tell you what, talking of Southampton, we've got to talk about this. This is this is rough for Southampton. That famous Saints statistics account that we all know when they said Leeds were, were out of the race. Um, I'm, I'll zoom in so folks can see it a little bit clearer. But obviously their games now have been rescheduled, folks. Um, uh, Leicester City and Preston North End games. Uh, they play now 11 games in 34 days. So that's one game every 3.1 days. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, their schedule doesn't slow down. Theirs is still like a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday kind of vibe. Obviously, we all come back and, and play these two in quick succession because it's Good Friday, Easter Monday. But then it's quite much like Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Um, you know, but, but South... Do you... I As a Southampton fan... If I was, I would be gutted about that, Locks, because that is a hell of a lot of football in such a short space of time. It you, is. You know? Yeah, it, it is. But it could also work the opposite way, mate. You know, if you True. can string three, four, five wins together, like, mm. you know, you you get used to winning. It's what happens in yeah. football, man. You, you you get loose. The same with losing, of course, but but you, you get used to winning games and the momentum sometimes can carry you through alone, especially mm. when you're playing some weak sides in there. So... Um, don't get me wrong, it can go either way. They could they could literally string maybe five losses together. It could happen. It probably won't. But I see them coping with it pretty well, mate. I think yeah. it, it's definitely a disadvantage, um, but I think they'll cope with it okay. I think, I, you know, that, that's it now, mate. I mean, Leicester, I wasn't even worried about Leeds and Ipswich two months ago. Now I have to worry about, well, I don't, but Leicester fans worry about Southampton and, and yeah. all of this as well. So... It's just it shows I underestimate I underestimated this league, mate. I mean, obviously points record it. is it still mathematically? Yeah, it's it's possible. Yeah, but <laughs> you never know, bro. Yeah, but come on, mate. You even you thought you know two months ago I was we were gonna get it. You yeah, no, I'm not. I'm record. not rewriting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think uh, you know you've been in the league more recently than than us, but. Um, no, the the standards still piss locks. Oh, it's, oh, it's shocking, yeah. mate. It's yeah, shocking, yeah. yeah, mate. Some of these players, the bloody hell, they could they belong in the bloody <laughs> Bulgarian third division, mate. Some of them, but I just think um, it's the relentlessness of it. It's the, yeah, it's the games it. every couple of days and the different teams you face. One's direct. One's going to sit behind the ball. One's going to kick the shit out of you for ninety minutes. It's just and the referees are honking. Oh. Bad. Honking, really mate. Bad. Yeah, really I don't, the, the whole game, mate, honestly, it was... Um, I don't think that's a penalty, by the way. No, no I'm not on about the Vardy one. I, I think I thought the first I thought the first one was a penalty, personally. Okay. But anyway, I wasn't on about that. The, yeah. the one I'm on about was, you probably haven't seen it, where their player was on a yellow card um, already, and we had a free kick, and we went to take it quick. The ref was fine with that. We went to take it quick, and their player put the hand up to stop the ball, handballed it, 
right? The ref walked over to him, put his hand in his pocket, realized right. he was on the realized he was on in yellow, and put his took his hand back out and just said, "Carry on, you know, another yeah, free kick, retake the free kick." And I'm like, what? like it's just. You know, no one likes a manager that moans about the refs all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, <laughs> no one, no one likes managers that just moan about the refs all, all the time. And Enzo, I think, tries not to, but sometimes you just got to think, mate. Like, you know, it, you, we've got a system where I know, you know, referees that perform well in this league are then promoted to the Premier League. But you've got the you've got the trash from the Premier League coming down here, mm. and then the ones that go up from the from the championship are crap anyway i mean that the um i can't remember the guys the first south asian british uh ref who, who ref the palace game the other day okay uh have you not heard have you not seen this no i've not seen it bro. so no. i think it's the first ever british south asian referee or something like that um okay. he's been promoted from the championship to the premier league mm. he was awful for us in our game earlier in the season i turned on the palace game on the weekend mate and he's there but he's signing autographs before the game the ref <laughs> Oh, like on the side of the pitch, and I'm like, what the what the hell's going on here, mate? I mean, yeah, yeah. I just the officiating is shocking, mate. But it's a hard job to do, so it's yeah, a hard no, job. It is, it is, mate. We'll never be happy with. Uh, I miss VAR. With... I miss VAR, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say it. I do. Yeah. I miss VAR. <laughs> I mean, that that DACA goal for starters would have been given. So it would have, it would have, mate. But then again, like West Brom earlier on in the season, they scored a handball goal. We don't lose that game. We win it 1-0. So, that, yeah, I hear you, man. It swings and roundabouts. But naturally, if it goes against you straight away, you go, oh, if we had VAR, if we had VAR. Um, Did you, know you see that foul it's on just the... Premier League teams. Just Premier League yeah. fucking teams and playing the yeah, big yeah. boys and everything else that comes with that. The notoriety, the, the exposure, all that, man. I love the Premier League. The Premier League is the GOAT league for me. So it's like... It's it's the it's the big yeah. time, isn't it? It's what yeah, everyone yeah. in every, you know, League Two, League One, Championship, they all, they all strike. Every team in, in the country wants to be in the Premier League. So 100%. we've got an opportunity to be there at my club, your club, um, yeah. to get back Mate, in you've there. you've won and... it, bro. You fucking won it, G. <laughs> you know Sometimes I need to be reminded, it. bro. Sometimes, honestly, yeah. I do need to... You know, I'll be sat in bed sometimes, mate. Honestly, no word of a lie. I'll just be laying in bed and I'll be thinking, we won the fucking Premier League. Premier, I can imagine, bro. I can it's imagine. mad. Do you, do you know what's funny that seeing the flex? It's not everybody, but obviously it's gone from like mind the gap to now some Leicester fans saying, yeah, but we won the Premier League in the FA Cup. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. You can't keep just changing the goalposts. No, Leicester um, fans can't because we always take the piss out of um, like Forrest for, for bringing yeah. up the, the historic, you know, European Cup and all that. So. Oh, I tell you what, lot, uh, Ash didn't half get you with that tweet, didn't he? When he got the uh, jaws thing, when you were like, "Result," I didn't even realise you tweeted me saying since this tweet, because I muted that conversation. Oh right, okay. <laughs> and then Ash retweeted you. I was like, "What's this?" And then I realised you'd done it to me. I was like, "Ah, oh, I missed that because obviously I'd uh, I'd muted it." Um, but fun. Times, I, I, it like, annoys me games. because yeah, I know I know I deserve it in a way, but it annoys me because literally. Every single person thought Leicester would win the league. Like, you know, like two months ago, everyone in this chat would have said Leicester will win the league. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm not... I'm getting people obviously bringing up old tweets and bookmarks and stuff. Ah, it's part of the game, isn't it, man? It's part of the yeah, game. Yeah, it's not quite as bad as the, the Southampton statistics. Saints statistics. No, no, that it's was not. Bad. Definitely not. <laughs> Um, definitely not. Right, mate. We'll finish up, but before we do, let's get some some predictions. Then, uh, who who's your top two in which order, and uh, who goes up through the playoffs? Oh man. Uh, I'm gonna say Southampton got through the playoffs. I'm gonna start there because I think even if Ips, I don't think Southampton will get top two, um, and I think even I think if Le Leicester are in the playoffs, I think Southampton will beat us, okay. and I think if Ipswich in the playoffs, Southampton will win that as well. So I'm, I'm saying Southampton, I'm locking that in to go up in the playoffs. Um, top two, mate. Leeds to win the title. Really? Leeds will win the championship, mate. They will win it. Second place. I mean, I've got to just go off like what I think right now. Huh? And um, I'm going to say second place Ipswich. Wow. Wow. I don't think we'll get top two. I think See, from, it's. I think we've. I think we fucked it, basically. Yeah, I. I agree with Paul. However, I don't think Hull will win the playoffs. I think West Brom's written all over that. I think they they get 
They win at home, they shit house a draw away, they get to the final and they shit house a 1 0 win and a terrible game in the playoff final. I think I, I can't see past West Brom at the minute, folks, but I do think the top two will look like this. I think Leicester will just look. I think personally that the, the international break, the break now between games massively comes at the right time for Leicester. Um, However, if they return after the international break and return with a loss or drop points, then I might rethink that. But I think it gives everyone a time to reset. Leicester to get, you know, energy back in the legs, if you like. And I just think their quality, just like Leeds, just like Southampton, Ipswich are just on vibes. I'm not defensively, I still think they're garbage, but I just think... You know, the momentum, two years. We've seen it before. Southampton did it. Other teams have done it where they've gone League One, Championship, Prem. It happens sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I think Ipswich are riding that wave. But I just think the quality will tell. You know, I think, like you say, Mavadidi, Dewsbury Hall, they come back. I'm hoping Rutter, some of them will come back looking like they did in the first part. So I do think we'll win the league because... I think we beat Millwall. I look at every home game now, Locks, and I think, well, I think we win that game. I think we win that game. I think we win that game. So that's like three, six, nine, twelve, six, 12 points in the bag. And then I'm like, okay, then get points away or whatever, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think Leeds will win the league with Leicester in second. Southampton's schedule will do them. Um, so I think it'll be Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich, Southampton, but West Brom win the playoffs. I think West Brom win the playoffs. Um, but that's and it. you think Southampton and Ipswich both got next year? Yeah, yeah. No, maybe not Ipswich. Maybe not Ipswich. And the reason I say that is because it all depends. I think Kieran McKenna leaves. Uh, as soon as a Prem job comes up, Kieran McKenna gets the nod. Um, I think if Palace had waited till end of year, they'd have gone with McKenna instead. But obviously Roy got injured. And, uh, not injured. Roy <laughs> <laughs> Pulled his ammy, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Out for season. But Roy's yeah. gone off. and Yeah, so I think um, he'll leave and then their players will be able to be got pretty cheap and it's whether mm -hmm. or not they can... they can Because I think someone in the champ might take Leif Davis if they get promoted, for example. They might go, do you know what? We'll take a chance. Um, uh, maybe he comes back to Leeds. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. But I hope we, you're right, mate. I hope yeah, we get yeah. second. I, I yeah. do think you will, mate. I think that you might still win the second league, mate, to be honest. It is what it is. You're still in front at the end of the day. Before we finish, mate, I don't think everybody knows about this, but you and Oscar have set up a uh, Formula One channel. It's a big passion of both of yours. Um, what's what's the channel name so I can share it with the people and let's get you some subscribers over so and tell people what it's about, mate? Oh, top man. Thank you. Yeah, oh, nice. the channel is called Tifosi Nation uh, I have watched TV. bits of it. Tell me how to spell it, bro, because it's... Tifo, so T-I-F-O-S-I. O-S-I. Nation. What does that mean? So it's Tifosi is like an Italian word for fans, and uh, it's what a lot okay. of the F1 teams use to describe their fans, yeah. Okay. Like Ferrari and McLaren. But I, I'm a McLaren fan. Oscar's a Ferrari fan. Uh, and yeah, just just getting content up. We always talk about it in group chats all the time. There's Oscars. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they they, um, the, they used to bore the life out of me in uh, in our uh, in our group. We had to but make listen. a new group chat. Yeah, we had to make yeah, a new yeah. group chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we just. I mean, we always talk over the group chat. So instead, we've uh, we've decided to just put some content up. So. Yeah, but it'd be, uh, be great if uh, any Leeds fans, you know, you don't subscribe to me, subscribe to Oscar. Yeah, that's yeah. his uh, That's his. No, but I've, his channel I've, as well. I have watched a few bits. So obviously, I did. I, it was these ones I've watched, as you can see here, to dip in. And uh, I really like the, the way that you've put together the videos, mate, with the editing and that, with you speaking over it. I think you've got a really good narrator voice. I can't lie to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you've had, you've had some good sh chats. And it's always great, Oscar, seeing him uh, fully dressed up in the full gear and that although the springsteen cap yeah, as well. <laughs> although when i looked i thought oh that must be a, a um like a team's hat and then when you put the short up i was like oh my god it's a springsteen hat uh, <laughs> but yeah danny's subscribed um yeah if if you like f1 even if you don't like f1 just go support the lads help the Thank algorithm you. but if you like f1 that's going to be the perfect channel for you. Let's support them. Let's get that pushed up because they're currently sat on five subscribers. Uh, one of them being me, by the way. One of them being me. Um, so please go over and subscribe to the channel and help with the algorithms because then 
more eyes get on it and that. And um, yeah, you. we've had a few subbed. Good mate. Hopefully, we'll see an increase. Thanks, I'll guys. Keep pushing it. Um, there you go. Look, we'll we'll, we'll get. We'll Joe. Sub. Joe should pick a team. Joe, Joe should pick a Formula One team. Um, white uh, Haas, mate. Haas, they're white. Maybe you go for. Them. I like the one where um, <laughs> I used to watch it, mate. Um, and I watched it when Jensen Button, Button won it for Red Bull back in the day. Um, Not Red Bull, I, mate. Was it? Who was it? Uh, McLaren, maybe McLaren. No, it wasn't. McLaren, Jensen was Button. It? Jensen. Jensen Button wasn't at Red Bull. Who did Jensen win it for? <laughs> he was. No, he wasn't, mate. Braun. Braun. He Braun. wasn't at Red Bull. Braun. Braun. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, there you go. So Braun I didn't even it. get that right. But Jensen Button won it back in 2018, did he? Yeah. No. No. Way before 2018, mate. Years ago. Years oh, ago. For fuck's sake. There you go. It, Max Verstappen it. the last three years, and then uh, mis- basically Hamilton every year before that. For Braun, the last, like, seven years. Braun, there you go. It yeah. was Braun. Red Bull was Jesse Marsh. Someone said, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull was Jesse Marsh. Um, Matt's not watched it since Damon Hill. I think uh, Locks probably weren't born when Damon Hill were driving, were you? God, probably not. Nineteen ninety eight. I was so. Yeah, there you go. Uh, right, folks, go check out to Forcey Nation Fan TV. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you go check out Locks on Leicester City Fan TV. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Thanks for tuning in this lunchtime, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out.